I can say that I felt see-through, that if a car drove by me, I felt it all the way into my bones. It all started for me when I went to the doctor for fatigue. They wanted to rule out any neurological problems, so I went and had an MRI with contrast dye, and they found a pituitary tumor. Then, because the pituitary tumor, which they thought was very small and not an issue, they wanted to make sure that it wasn't an issue, and I was supposed to have a repeat MRI with gadolidium, which is what the MRI dye is called. And um, we did a repeat six months later. It turns out that the dye, although it sounds like it's made out of water, is actually made out of a rare heavy metal named gadolidium. I had never heard the term gadolidium. I had been told that I was given, being given a very safe dye. So then I went to the neurologist again, and I'm like, I'm having neurological symptoms, I'm having allergic reactions, and will you please tell me what's the matter with me? She should have ordered a 24-hour urine test for gadolidium or a blood test for gadolidium. Instead, she did a more thorough examination and she did two MRIs of my spine. So she just doubled my problem. Then after it was probably obvious to her that she had just poisoned me, she told me that there was no other test that she could imagine and to just go beyond my way. So over the next three months, I went from doctor to doctor to doctor, complaining of very strange, horrible, significant problems. And they all looked at me wide-eyed and said they had no idea what was going on. Then someone told me that they felt electricity. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe that's what I'm actually feeling. And I felt it burn when I had my cell phone to my cheek. I could actually feel the heat and it felt like it was damaging the nerves in my face. And I began to read up on electromagnetic fields and started consulting with a doctor, an environmental doctor down in Dallas. And he said to me, he said, lots of people that feel electricity actually have heavy metal poisoning. So why don't you go get a 24 hour heavy metal urine test for all toxic me metals and then see if this is your problem. And I did, and I was off the charts in gadolidium. And this was the first time I'd ever heard the word. So I Googled it and I said, what is this? And then I found a website of people who were poisoned permanently with gadolidium, with no informed consent, not knowing what it was, and left forever with the symptoms. Then I found out that they've actually known that gadolidium retains since 2004 and that the product that I had was created by Bayer and it's named Gadavis. And in 2011, Gadavis submitted a fraudulent application to the FDA stating that they didn't know that it retained, but it does. And now they're saying, oh, it retains, but it causes no symptoms. And so I'm thinking that doesn't make any common sense at all. And that's not what I'm feeling. The symptom that I went in for was fatigue. The symptoms that I came out with were the precursors to multiple myeloma, fibromyalgia, postural orthotic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, nausea, skin thickening, extreme thirst, extreme dry eyes, and I can't even, oh, and I now start having fractures. I've had multiple fractures and my DEXA scan has worsened. I went from having um, slight osteoporosis to extreme osteoporosis to, and my eyesight has damaged. And I also had a six month infection and I've looked at hematologists and I've said to them, do you think that you can fight off infection when you have so many heavy metals in you? Doesn't this make common sense? So at what point are people being told what's happening to their body? I didn't have it. 
I saw a hematologist before I was injected four times. Now I have the precursor to multiple myeloma plus bone pain. And I'm looking at these hematologists. I'm looking at our top, the nation's top hospitals in treating multiple myeloma. And they're looking at me with this face of, well, it hasn't been proven that it causes multiple myeloma. And so therefore we use it. One hematologist looked at me and he said, it took 20 years to prove that, it, that tobacco caused lung cancer and all these other cancers. Basically looking at me going, we're 20 years out on proving what you think needs to be proven. But many of us are angry because when you smoke, you know you're smoking. So even those people that were smoking back in the 50s, they knew they were lighting up. When you go to the doctor, are you expecting to be injected permanently with a heavy metal? Permanently with a carcinogen? Because I've learned now so much about healthcare, I now know that if you look up what diseases radiation causes, it causes all cancers. You know how they treat radiation? They treat radiation with DTPA chelation. That is how I'm being treated for my gadolidium toxicity. They're treating me as if I had been exposed to a nuclear accident. The people, the organizations that were involved in poisoning us also are the ones that are responsible for proving causation. The American Medical Association, plus the hospitals, plus the research organizations and the medical schools that would be responsible for proving that gadolidium is a neurotoxin carcinogen aren't doing it. And when you look at them and you say, this is probably contributing to the epidemic of fibromyalgia because I didn't have fibromyalgia. Now I do after four injections. They look at you and they say, well, there's no large studies proving that. It is my personal experience and opinion that gadolidium is a massive neurotoxin and carcinogen and that the exact people that have the resources and education to prove this are willfully ignorant. If you call the Center for Disease Control and you say, hey, I believe that gadolidium may be contributing to this epidemic of fibromyalgia and cancers, they say to you, go talk to the FDA. So you go to the FDA and I've actually written to the FDA, was part of the FDA meeting in September of 2017, spoken with the radiologist that runs it, Libero Marzella. And I told him, I believe it's a carcinogen. And he says, are there any studies? And I would send him anecdotal evidence that shows that it causes cancer and other terrible diseases and then they just don't get back to you. Then you call the National Institute of Health and you say, I think I may know what one of the causes of cancer is, one of the causes of the epidemic of chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and autoimmune diseases such as lupus. And they say, tell the FDA. Then you think about it and you go, wow, I feel like I was experimented on. Was there an institutional review board for this? Were my Helsinki rights violated? Well, if they knew that it was a heavy metal and it was going to deposit permanently in my brain and they didn't tell me and they called it a dye, then I feel like I was experimented on. I went to many hematologists, many really respectable hospitals. I told them that I believe that this gadolidium is causing an epidemic of cancer, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, autoimmune diseases, and everyone looked at me like they couldn't help. Then I went to the FDA, the CDC, the NIH, and then I went to Health and Human Resources, and no one helped either. After notifying the authorities that I thought that this was sickening people, the only response was, there's no large studies proving that. Well, there's no large studies because no one wants to look. Imagine that you were poisoned four times with no informed consent, no cure, no responsibility being 
acknowledged and you notify our government, the FDA, the CDC, the NIH, and the Health and Human Services, and nobody does anything. After contacting all of those agencies, their only response to me was there wasn't a large enough study proving what I had to say. And there is no study because nobody wants to look. So what am I supposed to do? You talk to your doctors and they're trying to cover it up, it seems. Being poisoned by gadolidium feels like being tortured from the inside out. You're fatigued, you're sweaty, then you're cold. You're shivering in bed, and then you, you're drenched in sweat. Then you're twitching, then you're nauseous, then your bones hurt, then you're getting uglier, you're aging. Relationships are damaged because the people are tired of you talking about how sick you feel and how horrible it is that they're doing this to people in our nation's top hospitals. My sexuality was affected. I was engaged. We broke off the engagement. Our largest fights are about the gadolidium. People are worried that now I seem like a different person. I feel like a different person. I had 40 year relationships end because I was told that the things I was saying were not attractive anymore. After being poisoned with gadolidium, I'm now familiar with this boot and this boot. So when I'm trying to do what any doctor would say, which is go exercise, then I go and I fracture my foot. So my foot doctor told me to stop running, stop jumping, and walk very carefully. I now have severe osteoporosis in my hip. And so I now I'm like an 80 year old where I'm worried about a hip fracture and I'm only 50. One thing that really upsets me is that my MRI, which was normal, is now showing um, brain mass loss. And I'm telling you, I felt it. I felt them ruin my cognitive abilities. If I eat the wrong thing, I'm burning, nauseous, fatigued, and I have blood coming out my bottom. Many of us want to prove that the gadolidium hurt us. And what we found is that the, the major hospitals are actually no help. I had extra bone marrow set aside to test it for GAD, and that was lost. When I went to an allergist and I requested that I get a skin prick for gadolidium to prove that it causes inflammation, I was told that they didn't know how to interpret it. When I requested that they took bone marrow to test for GAD and to see if it causes multiple myeloma, they said they didn't know how to interpret that. I went to one of our most respected hospitals and they told me that my 24 hour urine test could not be used and it could not be repeated. So those are the types of games that you experience on the ground. It seems as if our nation's top hospitals are willfully ignorant and not interested in you gathering science to prove what you know is true, which is that it's causing illness. Many of us have had really strange experiences with our doctors and our hospitals where you're going to them, expecting them to care, expecting them to go, wow, maybe this should be recalled. Instead, they seem to not want to know what you're saying. And then they want to blame you. They want to say, maybe you're menopausal. Maybe I was even told that I might have been abused as a child. Yeah, they actually told me that. Yeah, I was told that there's a double blind controlled study that shows that people with fibromyalgia have been abused as children. I looked at the rheumatologist that told me that study and I said, I didn't have fibromyalgia until I was poisoned with gadolidium because I didn't have it until I was poisoned with gadolidium and now I have it. They have all sorts of studies on fibromyalgia, including a correlation between childhood abuse and developing fibromyalgia later in life. And I'm trying to reach out to the same people and say, but the gadolidium is causing fibromyalgia. I can prove it. My body can prove it. My body can prove that it causes multiple myeloma. 
because I had two bone marrow biopsies on this side where I have more gadolidium and it shows more multiple myeloma. On this side, there's not enough to even analyze. I know that I could prove that there's less gadolidium on this side and no one seems interested. The FDA added an additional black box warning in September of 2017 to gadolidium stating that it deposits permanently in all brain, bone, and tissue. And because of that, the radiologically, radiological community had to respond. You know what their response was? It was, they're gonna go study it in animals. And they voted to not study people like me. I've called them personally. I've emailed them personally saying, I know that it's causing cancers, fibro, chronic fatigue, and I get no response. One time when I called one radiologist, I was told that he wasn't allowed to talk to me for liability reasons. So this is a man who's responsible for studying the safety of gadolidium, but he can't talk to someone who's suffering from gadolidium? Does that make any sense? What's the social cost to permanently poisoning people? As society, we're going to pay for everyone's pain meds. This has to be part of the opioid problem. And then on top of it, we all have to pay for these people that are disabled instead of working. After being poisoned with gadolidium, I was offered gabapentin, then I was offered amitriptyline, which is a antidepressant. I feel like my human rights were violated, similar to how they violated the rights of the Jews in the Holocaust, that my Helsinki rights were violated. I was experimented on with no informed consent. I honestly believe that they're sociopaths, criminals, and these are some of the people that are most respected in our country. It seems sort of synergistic. Let's poison these people without them knowing and sicken them. And then after that, we can profit by having them on painkillers and antidepressants for many years to come. One hematologist who refused to give me the um, the diagnosis of gadolidium toxicity leaned over and whispered in my ear that it would be in my bones for 140 years. But then in my medical chart, he said that I didn't have gadolidium toxicity. I remember he looked at me and he said, who said it was safe? <laughs> it seems hypocritical it seems disappointing that our nation's top hematologists aren't going to the radiologists and saying, hey, this looks like it's causing hematological disorders. We need to stop. There's studies that show that people with MS that have more gadolidium in their brain actually have worse cognitive function. I have a friend online who has MS she was injected 20 times with gallidium, and now she only has a few teeth left.